today's afternoon, we have uh, two things on the agenda. Um, the first is uh, continuing on SQL. There are uh, two more things here, SQL, uh, DDL and updates and some stuff on schema creation and constraints. Um, this uh, should be fairly straightforward stuff uh, for anyone who has been in this area. Uh, the next thing which I want to do today is an introduction to Eclipse as uh, ID. Now, how many of you have already used Eclipse? Several of you. How many of you have used uh, Visual Studio? All of you. Uh, well, not most of you. How many of you have used uh, none of uh, Visual Studio Eclipse on NetBeans? A few. Okay. So, um, this is basically an ID. Eclipse is an ID, just like uh, Visual Studio on NetBeans. Uh, why did we choose Eclipse? Because the next set of uh, assignment, uh, next set of topics after this for the lab is uh, communicating with the database using JDBC, which we saw, and then a bit of uh, web programming. Uh, we are going to cover just servlets, although um, if you want to do full-fledged uh, web applications, you should probably get familiar with uh, at least JSP also, if you go the Java route. Or you could go uh, the PHP route and use PHP completely, or you could go the .NET route and use Visual Studio's um, web uh, facilities. Um, all of those are perfectly valid options, but for uh, uniformity here, we are going to stick to Java. It's uh, open source and uh, the ID is uh, these days are pretty good. Um, so, what we will do today then is to get you familiar with Eclipse, how to create a project, how to um, you know, create a class in there. And tomorrow's lab, will uh, you will be using Eclipse to write some small JDBC programs and then to write a small servlet. So, we have sample uh, servlets which can help you get started. So, today the goal is to, uh, you know, introduce you to Eclipse. Start up Eclipse on your laptop. Uh, you can uh, cd tilde slash desktop slash software desktop software eclipse slash eclipse. Just run, you can cd into this and then run eclipse. From here just type eclipse. Okay, now how do you uh, set up eclipse to do what you need to do? The instructions are there in today's uh, sheets. It says using Eclipse and introduction. Okay, and, and this is given there also how to start up Eclipse. And then follow the steps which are given there. Okay, so let me um, bring up Moodle here and show you the steps. Yeah, so the first step is to start Eclipse. Then you have to select a working directory for the project, and that comes uh, with. Uh, home uh, username workspace as the default. You can leave that alone. Now, in Eclipse, as in uh, all the other IDs, integrated development environment, uh, everything which you create has to be inside of a project. So, the first step after that is to create a new project, and the details are here. Once you've created a project, you will be on that project. Or if you, you can switch between projects if you want, and we'll see how. But whatever project you have selected at any point to work on, you can then proceed to create files in that project to uh, execute it and so on. So that's the basic set of steps. So how to start a new project? Uh, so basically, uh, you do a file new. So let's um, the instructions are there on with the sheet. What I'll do is uh, I'll demonstrate this. So now there are many kinds of projects which you can create in Eclipse. Um, it could be a EJB project, servlet project, session beam, whatever. Um, so you can choose a servlet. Uh, sorry, this is not a project. This is a, actually a servlet. So projects are from here to here. There are other kinds of projects also which you can create. Uh, for our purpose, we will be creating servlets. First, we are using JDBC, which doesn't really require 
servlets. But the next step is using servlets. So what we can do is uh, choose dynamic web project, which lets you use uh, JSP servlets and so on. And um, you have to give it a name. There's a target runtime, which uh, here uh, shows Apache Tomcat. If it is not installed by default, so you have to do a click on new runtime. Run, uh, this will not show up initially. But when you click on new runtime, these things show up. So you can select Apache Tomcat and then finish. Okay. So once you do this, you will see this Apache Tomcat as an option here. Yeah. So the instruction sheet which you have tells you in which directory to find it. Okay. So please read the sheet and it gives you the directory. By the way, I should mention if you, when you go back to your university and set up Eclipse, there are different versions of Eclipse. There are versions which include uh, Java EE support, the enterprise edition, which includes servlet support. There are versions which don't have that. So please make sure you install the version which has uh, Java EE support. I think this will be included in that DVD which you will be getting. So the DVD will have the correct version of Eclipse. But if you install Eclipse directly uh, from somewhere else, uh, if you use the Ubuntu Software Center and install it, for example, uh, make sure you get the correct version of Eclipse with Java EE support. If you don't have that, it will uh, not be able to uh, you know, connect to Tomcat. It will not be able to run servlets and so forth. Java SDK will have to be installed here. And let me also uh, mention when you go back to your institute and you are trying to set up something and you have a problem, there is a good place to ask for a solution which is this Moodle. So in Moodle, you can log in, you, um, many of you have probably logged into Moodle from your uh, institution. So you can connect in here and go to, yeah, so there is a news forum. So let us uh, create something for Maybe this thing is uh, help with software setup. Okay, so that's the topic. So you should all be getting this email, um, which I just typed in. If you don't get it, let us know. There will be some, uh, you check it uh, afterwards. Um, it may take a little while for the email to reach you. But if you don't get this email by tomorrow morning, let us know. There must be some configuration problem. OK, now coming back to Eclipse, the target runtime should be up as Tomcat. Um, this is for using uh, some JSP tag libs, don't worry about it. We are not using this feature. And uh, configuration default should be fine. Uh, we don't need to mess around with that. And we can click on finish. And now we have a project here called Proj1. This JDBC was another one which we created earlier. Okay. So now source files will normally go in here. Okay. So once we have created that, the next step is uh, to create a class. So new So this is if you are just creating a class. And 
you see the source folder has already been chosen there for you, proj1 slash source. You have to give it a name. Um, so these are all standard, you don't have to mess with it. If you want it to include a main program, you can click on this. So this will create an empty method stub. So here is public class test1, which also has public static void main. And now you can type in uh, the whatever the assignment is specified there. You can type that into the main program. Now some of you may already know Eclipse. Uh, for the others, when you go back today, please play around with Eclipse. There are a lot of features. You can't possibly play around with all of them, but at least make sure you are able to uh, create a few programs and uh, run them. So the next question is uh, how to run it. That's also specified in there. So you can try doing a few more things to get comfortable with Eclipse because tomorrow is another packed uh, afternoon where you have to write a JDBC program and a servlet and get it all running and discuss a little bit of SQL from assignment 1 and 2. Okay, so it's a packed day. So please get familiar with Eclipse before you come tomorrow. Um, <laughs> so we need a front end to build any meaningful database application. Uh, so the question is, what is this front end? Um, and today, pretty much all database applications use the web as the front end. So that is kind of decided. There is no question about that. The next question is, what technology do we use to build web front ends? Here, there's actually a wide choice. Other answers are okay. Yeah. Uh, my question is like if, if I, I don't know how many how many courses of database uh, other people have in their university mm -hmm. if there are two courses yes they, they get enough time to talk on to these issues if there is one course of database and there big be, be computer science then then probably we don't get time to talk on to these things okay. so, so that is that is that is yeah. that is my understanding yeah that's definitely a good question um, so where is the time to do all this uh, so there are two possible answers. Uh, in IIT Bombay, what we do is we have one course, but we also have an associated lab. So there is time set aside each week for the lab. And all of these parts, the, including running SQL, everything we are doing in the afternoons today is part of the lab. And the theory course does not have to worry about this. Because if you have to, again, describe that as part of the theory course, certainly you will run out of time. Um, so our assumption is that there should be an associated lab. Even if it is informally there, the time should be set aside for it, even if there is no formal lab. Um, if you do not do that, if you just type SQL queries and do not see the end result, student motivation is less because uh, you know they cannot build anything real. On the other hand, when they uh, go to sites on the web, they will quickly realize they are using databases all over the place. And when they build these web applications that connect uh, you know, they can make the whole connection from SQL to building applications which uh, are similar to what they use in the real world. So we believe that it is good to help them make that complete uh, bridge up to that point. It will motivate them better than just having something where they learn I SQL and normalization. Yeah. Uh, in their vacation, summer period or because they, they know what is really applications can be built on top of. So yeah. And the second uh, part of the answer to my question, one is to set aside lab time. The second, which we were just discussing with somebody else, was um, it, if you can, if you have any control over the sequencing of courses, it would be good to have a course before the database course where they have already learned, uh, you know, maybe if, if assuming you go with the Java route, yeah. Java and uh, how to build uh, servlets and so on should ideally have been covered already before coming in here. It need not be Java and serverless. It could be, uh, you know, Java. the Microsoft land, uh, Visual uh, Basic, or uh, C Sharp today uh, with .NET. Uh, that would be perfectly fine, and then lead into this. Or correspondingly, you know, many places today use uh, PHP or Python or other languages to which can be used instead of Java to do the same thing. But 
ideally they should have learned that before coming into this course. So, time in this course does not go into teaching them all that. So, if you have control over the syllabus, try to do this. It, it, it will lead to a better course. We have objection in Java before, before we are entering into this course. But instead we have since we have only one course, uh, maybe the dev component may have shown things like SQL and, and, and some projects. Uh. Yeah. The other thing which we have seen is uh, students uh, pick up on the technology a lot on their own these days. Yeah, they, with the yeah, web access, more. some of them already know it and those who do not also pick it up quickly. So, if you just give them a few exercises like what we are doing here, they will go back and learn a lot more. In fact, uh, if, if you look back 10 years, um, in IIT, the first people to learn about Servlex were not the faculty, <laughs> the students who had found uh, this stuff on the web and tried it out and actually in the course I was teaching, a uh, student came and said, can I build this using Servlex? So, I said, sure and that is where we started. Uh, that. Okay. Yeah. Lab, you mean the structured lab that is there? We have a separate uh, lab, lab course. course. Yeah. Lab it's it's course. database uh, systems lab and a database systems course. We have separate credits. Uh, we have uh, three hours a week for the lab and three hours of uh, lectures for the course per week. For the lab course? For the lab course, it is not lecture, it is a lab time. For the regular course, it is three hours of lecture. I so think what we have the same structure, similar structure, three hours we spend in the classroom, three hours. Yeah, if you have that. Like 1.5 for three hours or one credit. Uh, the credit structure uh, for us is uh, lab hours count half of theory hours. We actually double the theory, but it is equivalent. We call it 6, 3, you may call it 3, 1.5. Comes to the same. Okay. Any other uh, such comments? They are pretty valuable comments. So, please go ahead and make them. Do you discuss design of the front end with the student? Like okay. we are talking about the design of the back end, right? Yeah. So, that is a good question. Do we uh, discuss front end design? Uh, we do not really have time in this course to cover, uh, you know, what are aspects of good design. Um, so, we do not actually do that. Uh, so, students, um, you know, pick it up on their own. Um, there is actually a whole course on design which is offered not by computer science in our case, although it, it would make sense as a computer science course, is offered by our industrial design center and uh, that is a full fledged design course and it is actually very valuable. Unfortunately, we do not have time in our syllabus for that, but um, if, if there is an elective possible on design, that would be very nice. I think a little of introduction about how to make use of flowcharts or activity model or designing the front end so is going to help. Uh, it would help. This particular um, course. Our experience is we do not have time in this course, but a software engineering course for example, uh, it might make sense to include uh, design aspects as part of the software engineering. Actually, there are too many things in yeah. the database which need actually time, right? Exactly. Any other comments? Okay. Thank you.